Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is huge. Three big pieces of country. The Grand Staircase Cliffs, the Kuiperowitz Plateau, and the Escalante River Basin. Really incomparable places. The Grand Staircase Escalante is a national monument designated by President Clinton in 1996 under a law called the Antiquities Act of 1906. The president has the authority to designate historic landmarks and historic and prehistoric structures and other objects of historic or scientific interest as national monuments. It was designated to protect some of the most spectacular wilderness and antiquities that our nation has. There is world-class paleontology sites here. There are sites sacred to five nations in the Southwest. And there is world-class geology and biology that's all captured in this magnificent landscape. Of course, everyone in the world has seen pictures of the landscapes of southern Utah, soaring towers, hidden canyons, water in the desert. And most places in the world don't have that. And, and if they ever did have it, it's gone. So we've still got something here that's just not available anyplace else in the world. It really wasn't until this became established as a monument that paleontology just exploded. Recently, paleontologists working in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument found an extraordinarily well-preserved Tyrannosaur skull and associated skeleton. And this was in such a remote part of the monument that they actually had to airlift it out with a helicopter. All right, hang on a sec. OK, this fellow is Nasutoceratops titusi. And the name means big nose horn face. So about 76 million years old. This particular fossil was found in the Kaparowitz Formation, which is one of the formations in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, and the one that has really been producing just extraordinary fossils. The preservation is so extraordinary that we literally have things from ant nests all the way up to big, huge dinosaurs. This is one of the dinosaurs that everybody loves. These are the big carnivores. And this guy's name is Lythronax, a distant, distant, distant cousin of Tyrannosaurus rex much earlier. And so for the first time, paleontologists are able to almost recreate an entire ecosystem that's 75, 76 million years old. Oh, apple trees, cherry trees in blossom. My, my opinion of the monument, it was a huge mistake. Yeah, tick, tick, tick. 1.9 million acre land grab without even coming here to Utah and consulting us. Big mistake, but I'm glad Trump stepped up to the plate and helped the state of Utah out in some respect. The critics of Grand Staircase Escalante are still upset that this happened without their input. Today, we will save the Grand Escalante Canyons and the Kaparowitz Plateaus of Utah for our children. President Clinton moved quickly. He was talking to scientists, he was talking to land managers, but there was no public process, there were no public hearings. And the administration learned a lesson. When President Trump came to Utah in December of 2017 to reduce the monument by half at the behest of Senator Orrin Hatch, he split the monument up into three chunks. And if you look at the map that he used to do that, Evidently, the only thing he was thinking about was potential mineral development. So everything that's on this map in orange and yellow represents the boundaries of the original Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, 1.9 million acres. The yellow areas are the areas that have been taken out of the monument. So what is left is less than a million acres now. The things that have been taken out in the monument have potential for tremendous paleontological discoveries. It's not just more of the same. Almost every field season, something incredible comes out of these layers. These reductions are really unprecedented in scale. If you look at the whole history of public land law, you never see any action even coming close to this. California Edison came in here in the 60s, and they determined then there was enough coal to run the entire energy needs for the United States for 200 years. We are so filthy rich with natural resources, and we can't touch them. And I don't really know what Utah got out of it other than they got out.
you got to ask yourself as a businessman, what do you got to sell? And what we got to sell are some of the greatest landscapes on this whole planet. You're busy? Yeah, we I are mean, very busy. Most of us here in Boulder are very worried about the potential for extractive industries in this area. Those types of industries will go out into the wildlands around us and basically blot them in ways that will make them less attractive to this world population that I'd like to see come here. And a signal to the world that this is a less special place. After all, it's been demoted. The small community's dream of extractive industry coming in and everyone ending up rich. But it simply isn't going to happen. And what we're seeing is that those beautiful little spots surrounded by protected public land attract people who are retiring, who can work remotely, who want to work in the tourism or recreation industry. You know, outdoor recreation generates billions of dollars now, far more than mining or logging or cattle. It's very unique compared to Denmark because Denmark is so flat. It makes me uh, feel good. <laughs> it's a special landscape for generations mm -hmm. of Americans and Native Americans. Since the monument was designated 21 years ago, tourism has really become the heart of the economy, but it's not the only economy. Now we need CPAs, we need doctors, we need dentists. There are rural communities everywhere who would give their eye teeth to have the opportunity that we have before us, and for reasons that we really don't understand, that's being swept away. And so now we have to argue the issue in the courts. Does the president have the right to reduce the size of the monument for no apparent reason? The Antiquities Act is narrow. It gives the president one-way authority to reserve. It does not give the president the authority to modify or revoke. Remember that this is desert. This is dry land that does not recover. That's why being restrained about the way we use this land is so important. Because once we lose it, we don't get it back. This place means more to me than almost any place in the world. And I will, I want to fight for it as much as I can because we need to keep places like this protected for not just future generations of humans, but for all of the plants and animals that need large, untracked pieces of land to be able to live their lives. And there's something valuable about just knowing that a place like this exists complete and isn't covered with us everywhere. <laughs>